My name is Eckhard Proy, I'm the music director of the Cincinnati Chamber Orchestra and I am here at the Rankin House in Ripley, Ohio with award-winning author Anne Hagedorn who wrote the book Beyond the River, uh, which is all about the Underground Railroad that started here in Ripley, Ohio. Um, what are some of the most significant locations and buildings in Ripley uh, or in the area that were important uh, for the Underground Railroad? What's one of the most unique details of this town is that the original buildings have never had to be replicated. They've been restored, but they are here. It can be visited, can be seen, and of course they're brimming with stories. If you walk along Front Street in Ripley, right along the river, you can see uh, the house where the Collins family uh, built the coffins uh, that, and the wagons that would help uh, slaves sometimes to escape. Next to the Collins house was the Shaw house, which was a house of slave catchers very intense debate between the Collinses and the Shaws that was actually uh, written about in one of the newspapers in Maysville, Kentucky. The Collinses were saying, you're looking in our windows. The Shaws were saying, you're hiding slaves. Um, you're committing a crime. No, you're committing a crime. And so you could sort of see that in this town, there were slave catchers, there were abolitionists, and they were uh, creating a kind of intense atmosphere. And each of those houses had a window where they could look out and see uh, Rankin's house and up on the hill. So imagine what they were thinking. The slave catchers were thinking, uh, we have to send a posse up there. And the others were thinking, uh, we have to be sure we can get up there freely any time. And it was not only Reverend Rankin himself, I mean, it, it took uh, quite a few people yeah. to make this uh, network uh, uh, work. Um, and actually his entire family helped out. That's right. And it, it was a large family. Uh, he and his wife, Jean, raised 22 children. 13 were their own four daughters, nine sons. The daughters were involved in uh, a few documented escapes including one where two of the daughters uh, dressed up and uh, were taken on a carriage to the McCaig house uh, where uh, two young uh, women had escaped during the day. You have to always understand that they had to get any fugitive slaves out of Ripley as soon as possible. Two of Rankin's daughters uh, swapped clothes with uh, the young ladies, uh, the young fugitive slaves at uh, the McCaig house and the carriage drove away with uh, the fugitive slave girls. The Ohio River, which is right below the Rankin House where we are right now, which is on a, on a, on a hill, separates the state of Ohio from the state of Kentucky and it separates uh, the state of freedom uh, from the state of slavery. And it was, you know, a, a gateway to freedom, the river was, as well as a barrier as well. It was a goal, it was a challenge, it was a symbol of hope. Um, the shores of the Ohio River uh, were home to slavery's two cultures of resistance and oppression, colliding, often like sheets of ice grinding one against the other. So um, <clears throat> I, I see the Ohio River as really being a character in the drama. The earliest known version of the song entitled The Good Old Way was published in Slave Songs of the United States in 1867. In some versions, in the river is replaced by to the river. The phrase in the river is significant for two reasons. The more obvious reason is that the song has been often used sung at outdoor baptisms. Another reason is that many songs sung by victims of slavery contain coded messages for escaping. When the enslaved people escaped, they would walk in the river because the water would cover their scent from the bounty hunter's dogs. Similarly, the starry crown could refer to navigating their escape by the stars. And good Lord, show me the way 
could be a prayer for God's guidance to find the escape route commonly known as the Underground Railroad. As I went down to the river to pray, 